Hello everyone, welcome to my video on elementary differential equations. This is video number 17 for chapter 2. In this video, we discuss applications of autonomous equations, in particular the application for population dynamics. In these models, the unknown is uh, usually the population of a species. So let's uh, denote this by y is a function of t. So typically, we know that the behavior or the rate of change for a population at a time t um, is depending on the state that means the population itself and it doesn't really depend on t okay so y prime of t typically does not depend on t and it's usually a function of y only and then we know such um, equations are an autonomous equations or if it's a system then you end up with an autonomous system so in such a model the concept of um, critical point, which is also known as the equilibrium state, would be of interest and uh, their stability or instability would be analyzed and will have a um, physical meaning for the population evolution. We'll consider a couple of models um, of interest typical ones from simple to more complex okay so let's look at the first model this will end up in the exponential growth so um, the growth rate let's call it r for a population then um, the population changes um, proportionally to the um, population itself with a rate r so y prime is ry and then you have initial population y not at t equals zero so we are quite familiar with this model we know how to solve it and we know the solution is the exponential function with the rate r and in the exponent so rt on the top here and the initial condition y not will be the constant standing in front of the exponential function. So if initially there is no life, that is, um, that population does not exist at t equals zero, so y not is zero, and then you see that zero times anything is zero, and uh, y of t will be zero for all t bigger than zero. So if there's no life initially, there will not be. It will remain that way. Otherwise, um, if initially there is life with amount y naught, even though y naught could be very, very small amount, but it's non-zero, so there is something there. And then, according to the model, we see that the population will grow exponentially in time and uh, in particular as time goes to infinity the population grows to infinity so um, I know you will be thinking that a model like this is not realistic for any population to grow it must be sustained by the resource surrounding it and in nature the resource is limited and it will not be able to support a unlimited infinite amount of population so um, in a more realistic model we'll have to modify this to take that into account okay and let's look at the um, very famous logistic equation so it's a more realistic model for the population dynamic. Let's look at it. So the model says um, dy dt equals to some rate in this bracket here times the population. 
And the difference here is that this rate here now is no longer a constant r. It varies. So um, we see that it's r minus a times y, where a is some positive number. So we see when y is 0, you're growing at rate r. But then, as the population grows, it has a negative effect on the rate. So the rate will become smaller and smaller as y grows. Okay, So that is the um, so-called logistic equation. So we can um, modify um, this equation in, I mean, rewrite it. We can pull out the r here. And then in the bracket, it becomes 1 minus y over k. What is the k? Well, k is just r over a. It's what you put down here in the denominator when you divide this expression by r. So you can easily verify that. <coughs> so the meaning of these terms, are they now? The r here is called the intrinsic growth rate. Okay. It will be the growth rate if the resource is unlimited, but it will be modified in the model because we take the population's effect on the resource into account. And uh, this constant k here, the reason we lump the r over a to be the constant k is the following. And the k is called the environmental carrying capacity for the following reason. We see that when the population reaches and the density reaches k, this value, so y over k is 1, then in the bracket we get 1 minus 1, which is 0, and the population stops growing. Okay, So that's the environmental carrying capacity. It will not allow the population to grow higher than this amount k. Okay, so we recognize this as an autonomous equation. There is no t here. So we see clearly there are two critical points. So when that will make the right hand side zero, one is y equals zero, and the other is when this bracket equals zero, and that is y equals k. And uh, we can do a simple um, checking of the sign on the number line around these two critical points and then you will quickly see that y equals 0 is unstable and y equals k is stable. Okay, so this means the following. Now if the initial population lies between 0 and k and now since 0 is unstable and you can also see that, then this is positive, this is positive, y prime will be positive. So the population will grow until it approaches k, so y will approach k as t grows. Otherwise, if the initial population is bigger than k, that is, it's above the environmental carrying capacity, then what happens is that this term will be negative and this term is positive, so y prime is negative and y will decrease and it will get smaller and then it will approach k as time grows. So we can lump these two observations together and say that if initially there is life, so why not y at 0 is strictly bigger than 0, it's not 0, because we know if y at 0 is 0, then y equals 0 for all t, right? So if it's just slightly bigger than 0, or a lot bigger than 0, whatever amount you have there, we show that um, with this discussion, we know that um, y will approach k asymptotically as time grows to infinity. And now let's um, try to solve this logistic equation just for fun because we see that it's an autonomous equation and it's separable so it's possible to solve it and here actually it's even possible to obtain an explicit expression for the solution so let's try that 
Okay, so now we consider the following initial value problem, dy dt equals r1 minus y over k times y, and y0 is y0. And then we can separate the variables, moving these terms containing y to the left and move dt to the right and integrate. So we'll have 1 over this guy, which is this term dy, equals r dt, which is just dt move over, and then we integrate. So we see that we need to um, work out two integrations. This one is trivial, it's just r times t and plus a constant, and then the tricky part is to integrate this term here, the left hand side, and we see that we have learned a technique called partial fraction in calculus that will allow us to break this term here into the sum of two terms of a first order polynomial in the denominator. Okay, so we see that um, we can um, start from the integral here and work on it and uh, we see first we can multiply both um, numerator and denominator by k so it looks a bit nicer without having this fraction here. So I have k here and then have k minus y. And then this I can break up into two terms. That is 1 over y plus 1 over k minus y. You can easily um, verify that this is an identity. Okay. So if you don't remember how to do a partial fraction, then um, make a review. So you will you will just have a constant a here and constant b here and rewrite this as a whole fraction and compare the numerator to determine the a and b and if you do that and you find a is 1 and b is 1. And then we see that integrating these two terms are rather easy. Okay, and we put this back and try to work out the integral of this. So the integral of the first one is natural log of absolute value of y and uh, the integral of the second one is uh, natural log of uh, k minus y in absolute value and multiply by the, the chain rule there is the negative sign so you get minus. And then you see um, ln of this minus ln of that can be written as a natural log of uh, this divided by that, so we have this fraction. Okay, now putting this back into the equation on the left hand side, and the right hand side is just rt plus c, then we get a relation here for the solution y. Okay, now starting from here, we try to manipulate so that we can write um, explicitly y as a function of t. So first we see if natural log of this is that, then this is the exponential function of this. So we have e to the rt times e to the c, which is another constant, so we just denote it by c anyway, because that will be determined later. Okay, so we have this relation, and then we can determine the value c. What would the c be? So we put in the initial condition. The initial condition says when t is 0, y at 0 is y naught. So put t to be 0, e of 0 is 1, so I get c here. And then you have y naught over k minus y naught in absolute value. So that's the value c. And so this is the solution given in an implicit form where the constant c equal that. And we see that in the expression there is an absolute value sign, which makes it hard for us to write out an explicit form. So we need to discuss different cases which will give us different sign of this expression so we can remove the absolute value. Okay, let's do some discussion. So first let's assume that y0 is between 0 and k. And then from the property of the autonomous equation, we know that the solution will also be between 0 and k because 0 and k are two 
critical points. So in that case, we can remove the absolute value sign because uh, this expression will be positive and this expression will be positive. So we'll have y over k minus y is c times that, where c is this thing without the absolute value sign. Then um, it's not difficult to solve this for y, then you can um, move this term to the right and then you have a first order polynomial in y which can be easily solved. So in that case we have the expression yt would be um, ck e to the rt over 1 plus c times e to the rt. And we can plug in the expression for c also which is this fraction without absolute value sign and then um, multiplying both numerator and denominator by k minus y naught and this is the expression we will have. So here it's just to manipulate a little bit so we can see what happens asymptotically. Okay, so once we have this expression we see that we can multiply both numerator and denominator by e to the um, negative rt and then it will cancel this and it will cancel this and you will put a term here so which we write here. So this expression has the advantages that the t ap uh, appears only here in the exponential term. Then we see if we want to take the limit as time go to infinity this term goes to zero. Then we'll have ky0 over y0 which is k. So we see the solution approaches k asymptotically as t grows to infinity. So this um, behavior is um, the same as we predicted earlier by simply analyzing the critical points of the autonomous equation. Okay, so let's consider the second part of the discussion. So here I repeat the solution in blue, um, the general form. Now the second part is, um, if now initially y0 is bigger than k, what happens? Then we know that um, the absolute value sign will, can be written as y over y minus k. This will be a positive value because k minus y will be negative. Right? Also c would be y0 over y0 minus k, so this will be a positive value. And then um, again you can do the similar manipulation and you can write the explicit form of a solution. y would equal to that. And then put in the c value, again similarly, put in the c value and multiply numerator denominator by y0 minus k, you get that. You might pause the video if you wish to work this out by yourself. And then I will um, multiply e to the negative rt on both numerator and denominator. So this will be 1, this will be 1, and I have e to the negative rt here. So it's this term. Okay, and then um, finally um, I move this negative sign in and I change it into k minus y0. Now if you turn to the previous slide and you will see that this is exactly the same form as the one we have obtained for the case when y0 is less than k and bigger than 0. Okay, so that's very interesting. We see that in both cases, the solution actually takes the same form, even though when we remove the absolute value sign, we have to put a minus sign in one of them. And then of course, as time goes to infinity and grows, and this term is zero, and then we get ky0 over, KY over y0, which is k. So y equals k is the absentotic state of the population. So what does this model say is that um, if um, there is a maximum capacity of uh, the environment 
that can sustain of that population, then、um, as time goes, the population will just reach that level and remains there. Okay, so、um, let's look at one more model. This is、um, based on the logistic growth, but we add one more、um, phenomenon into it. That is is something we observe very much in nature, for example, in marine life. Like if you、um, overhunt or you overfishing one population of the fish, such that the population is reduced so much past a threshold, then they will not be able to recover and they will die out. Okay, so there is a threshold. So here is the model. So we have y prime is negative r times one term that is one minus y over capital T, and then another term one minus y over k times y. So let's look at these three terms.、Um, This is the population. So in the end, this becomes the effective、um, growth, the rate growth. Okay, and then this term we are familiar with. That is the capacity, the threat, and、uh, the capacity of the environment. How what they can、um, sustain. And this is the new term with a capital T. And by introducing this term in this form, we have to put a minus sign here. So here R is the rate is bigger than zero, and、uh, both T and K are a、um, positive quantity, but they have an order that is、um, zero is less than T and is less than K. So K is bigger than T. So、um, by the factorized form on the right hand side, we can see that easily there are three critical points. Y equals zero, y equal t, and y equal k, and we can check the signs around them, and we easily see that y equal t is unstable, y equal zero is stable, and y equal k is stable. Okay, so then、um, let now、um, y not be the initial population, so we can discuss. The asymptotic behavior for this model, as time grows in long term, how does the population behave? Okay, so we see that if the initial population lies between zero and capital T, what happens? And then we see that this is positive, this is positive, and this is positive, and this is negative. So y prime is negative. And it decreases, and it approaches zero asymptotically. Second, now if y not is between t and k, then what happens? Then we know this is positive, this is positive, but then this is negative because y is bigger than t, and then this is negative, and two negative makes a positive. So the population will increase. And will approach the critical point that's above it, which is k. And last, if the initial population is bigger than k, the capacity, and then we'll have positive, negative, 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 three negative, then makes a negative term. So y prime is negative, so the population will go down and approach the level k. Okay, so. In that discussion, we see that、um, y not equals t is now a threshold. We have the following, in particular, if y not initial value is less than t, then the population will die out, and if it's bigger than t, and then the population will grow into the level that's sustainable. Okay, so. We see that, and such a model is actually very reasonable. We observe it in nature, in particular in marine biology, in in the fishing. If we 
overfish and make the population below certain threshold, the fish will go extinct. Okay, so that is sad. Okay, so as a final remark, um, I would like to say that um, one can also solve this equation using treat it as a separable equation the same way as we did for the logistic model and then apply um, partial fraction and work out the integral but the computation will be quite lengthy and uh, you will have a rather complicated uh, um, implicit form of the solution but if you shall be curious um, why not go ahead and give it a try and okay, so um, that's all I have to say um, for applications of autonomous equation. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.